track wins the Horizon League title. And bowling stays rolling. All this and much more coming up next on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome into the Penguin Rundown. I'm Richie Giuliano. Alongside with me here today, John Ostapowitz. And John, this is a huge week here at Youngstown State. Both the men and the women have the opportunity to host a Horizon League game this week. Yeah, it's a championship-filled weekend here at YSU. And the men kicked off last night with their home game here at, at YSU. And then the women, they kick off tomorrow night so uh, to be announced their opponent but you know it's it's such a, a wonderful filled you know weekend here last year and the Youngstown State women's basketball team for the first time in program history Horizon League champions after the regular season and that's where I'm going to start us off here to start the show as the women's basketball team looked to finish the season on top of the conference as they concluded their schedule with matchups against IUPUI and UIC in a battle of the two best teams in the Horizon League the women fell to IUPUI 68 to 45. Junior Jen Wendler led the team with 11 points of 5 of 7 shooting off the bench. That would be the only bright side for Youngstown State offensively as they struggled in the ball game shooting only 31 percent from the field. The Penguins inconsistencies started out of the gate as they were only able to score just three points in that first quarter. Defensively though Youngstown State couldn't do much to stop the Jags as IUPUI shot over 48 percent from the floor including 50 percent beyond the arc. In the regular season finale last Sunday, the women took on UIC, defeating the Flames 61-54. to Senior Lily Ritz led the way for the Penguins with 23 points and 8 rebounds, while sophomore Malia Magestro and junior Paige Shai followed behind with 18 and 10 points. In an offensive turnaround, YSU shot over 45% overall, including a 16-for-20 performance from the free throw line. With the win, the women were able to claim co-Horizon League regular season champions for the first time in program history. They have earned a first round bye and the second seed in the Horizon League Women's Basketball Championships. Also, the Horizon League honors were released earlier in the week that recognized three players and our head coach. All ball made the all defensive team for Youngstown State. Chelsea Olson earned second team all Horizon League and Lily Ritz in her first year in the Horizon League earned both first team and defensive team. Head coach John Barnes was given the honor of being this year's Horizon League coach of of the year due, the, due to the tremendous job that the team has done all season long despite being seated seventh in the preseason poll. The team will next play in a corner final game at the Beagley Center tomorrow at 7 o'clock. The men's basketball team hit the road the last two games to finish their historic regular season. Starting off at Wright State, the Penguins fell to the Raiders 84-71. to Sophomore Shamar Rattan Mays led the team in scoring with 20 points and knocked down three from beyond the arc, while senior Tevin Ullison finished with 19. Senior Michael Akuche and junior Dwayne Cohill followed as both had 12 points. Wright State's offense outmatched Youngstown State's down low as they scored 54 of their 84 points in the paint. The next game also resulted in defeat as the men fell to Northern Kentucky 75-61. to In the loss, Ollison led the team in scoring with 15 points while sophomore Will Dunn and Miles Hunter finished in double figures as well with 14 and 13. Following the weekend games, two Penguins earned All-Horizon League honors. Akuche was named to the All-Horizon League second team and Cohill was named to the third team. Congratulations to the men. The seventh-seeded Youngstown State took on the tenth-seeded Robert Morris last night at the Beagley Center for the first round of the Keeps Horizon League Men's Basketball Championship. Recaps and statistics of the game of the tournament can be found on YSUSports.com. The softball team is back to their winning ways as they came out victorious in all four games this past weekend in the Battle at the Bay Tournament. In game number one of the opening doubleheader on Friday, Youngstown State defeated host Hampton University 2-1. Freshman pitcher Bree Kohler started the tournament hot on the mound as she pitched a complete game with nine Ks to earn her first career victory. Kohler, along with fifth-year infielder Nikki Sabini, went two for three at the plate, contributing to four of the team's six hits. With this victory, head coach Brian Campbell earned his 300th win with Youngstown State and his 585th all-time. 
In the nightcap against the University of Pennsylvania, the women followed their excellent performance, defeating the Quakers 4-1. The story of this game was fifth-year pitcher Ellie Buffenbarger, who struck out her 566th career batter to break the all-time strikeout record at Youngstown State. Buffenbarger earned eight more strikeouts against Penn and walked only two to pick up her fourth win of the season. Fellow fifth-year Yasmin Romero had a game of her own, going three for four with an RBI, while junior Conchetta Rinaldi hit her second home run of the season. The Penguins did not slow down their success in day number two of the tournament, where they extended their winning streak to six games. In game one versus Norfolk State, YSU defeated the Spartans convincingly by a score of 7-2. Once again, Buffenbarger pitched a stellar game, picking up her fifth win after striking out ten batters in just five innings. At the plate, junior Megan Turner, the transfer from Kent, went two for three with a double, while Sabini went two for three with a home run. Bree Kohler added to the surge with her first collegiate home run that scored two runs in the triumph. The Penguins concluded the tournament with their second matchup against the University of Pennsylvania, where they again topped the Quakers thanks to some late scores in the bottom of the sixth inning. Youngstown State earned hits all throughout their lineup as seven different Penguins recorded one or more throughout the ballgame. Sabini and senior Grace Sia both went two for three, while Romero knocked in two RBIs and scored three runs. The softball team is now 8-5 and five heading into another week of travel, as this time they are heading to South Carolina to compete in the Scotsman Invitational. Both Friday and Saturday, the Penguins will compete in doubleheaders against St. Peter's and Presbyterian. The team will finish off their 18-game road trip against South Carolina next Tuesday, then finally head home to host the first games of Horizon League play. The baseball team had a tough weekend in Nashville, Tennessee, after dropping all four games to the Belmont Bruins. On Friday night, Youngstown State was held to just three hits in the ball game and got beat in the opener of the series by a final of 3-1. to one. Senior John Snyder was a bright spot as he pitched eight innings of work, giving up just four hits while striking out six batters. The offensive struggles continued for YSU in the doubleheader on Saturday, where in Game 1, the Penguins had just five hits and left all five men on base. Junior Braden O'Shaughnessy posted two of the YSU's five hits. Belmont's left-handed pitcher Andy Bean shut out the Penguins in six innings while striking out six to help give Belmont Game 2 of the series 5-0. to zero. In the nightcap on Saturday, the Gwens got off to a hot start after senior Dominic Bucko blasted a solo jack to the right field, followed by a double from Braden O'Shaughnessy with his brother Patrick O'Shaughnessy, who knocked him in. Youngstown State led 2-0 after the first inning, but the Bruins came back to score five consecutive runs to win the nightcap by a final of 5-2. In the series final of, this, of Sunday, it was a pitcher's duel between YSC's right-hander and Matt Borowski and Belmont's Jalen Borders. Neither team scored a single run through seven innings until Belmont had three hits in the eighth inning to help them take a 2-0 lead. Belmont's closer Kyle Briannon came in and shut out the door on the Penguins in the ninth to complete the sweep. Broski threw another gem in his second start of the season, tossing 7.1 innings while striking out eight batters and only surrendering one earned run. The baseball team is back on the road as they head to Texas Rio Grande Valley this upcoming weekend. Catch all four games on ESPN+. The track and field team competed at the Horizon League Indoor Championships at the Watson and Trestle training site this past weekend. On Saturday in the women's events, senior Jessica Staver logged a YSU school record in the women's long jump while also taking the league title in the event. Junior Morgan Cole clocked the second fastest time in school history of 17 minutes and 1.13 seconds in the 500 meter run. And in the women's pole vault competition, the Penguins added two second place finishes and a fifth place finish where senior Caitlin Griffey and junior Aaron Bogard each had a 3.79 meter vault, while junior Sydney Walker had a 3.59. In the men's pole vault on Saturday, why she picked up the event victory as freshman Elijah Nelson cleared a bar just under five meters for the event victory. Nelson's victory extends YSU's reign in the event to five straight seasons. In the men's weight throw, junior Dominic Perry took the crown while senior Zach Gem followed right behind and earned the silver. 
The men's distance medley relay com team composed of senior Ethan Sparks, sophomore Ryan Laird, senior Mikel Lagaris, and sophomore Ty Kuhn, who clocked the eighth fastest time in program history to win the league title in the event. On Sunday, the women set a Horizon League record for most points scored across the championship meet and won eight event titles. Senior Nicole Squatrito set a new YSU record in the women's 800-meter run and replaced her own previous school record time. In the 3,000-meter run, Cole earned YSU's first conference title in the event in school history. In the men's event on Sunday, they scored the second highest indoor point total in program history with 225 points and won eight event titles. Alfreda Goff Athlete of the Year, Sean Peterson, clinched a Horizon League record fifth straight 800-meter league title. In the 60-meter dash, graduate student Anthony Woods finished in first place, Hunt finished in third, and junior Christian Ford followed in fifth. In the men's triple jump, junior Jakari Lomax notched back-to-back -back conference championships, and senior Daquan Watson earned the bronze with a personal best performance. Both squads held the outright lead in team point totals across the board on both days of conference competition. Congratulations to the entire men's and women's indoor track and teams on their outstanding season and performance at the Horizon League Championships. Last Sunday, the, the lacrosse team hosted a game for the first time this season at Farmers National Bank Field against Niagara. Despite it being their only game of the week, they would lose a close one to the Purple Eagles. On the offensive end, sophomore Aaron Clark scored a team leading three goals while freshman Natalie Calandra Ryan scored two. On the defensive end, graduate student Savannah Clark saved 15 strikes from Niagara. Following a tied score at halftime, Niagara turned up the heat and outscored the Penguins 9-4 in the last two periods. YSU came out on, on top in the draw controls, but could not secure the win with their overall score. The lacrosse team will face off against Akron tomorrow at Farmers National Bank Field for the Mid-America Conference opener at 1 p.m. And with more on the lacrosse team, we're going to send it over to Caleb Ellison, who is standing by with a special guest. And thank you very much. Welcome into the round table today. I'm your host, Caleb Ellison, and joining me is the main announcer for our women's lacrosse team, Anthony Romo. Anthony, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Caleb. I'm glad to be here. So looking at the team here, pretty early on in the season, two and two, just got their first home loss against Niagara this past Sunday, but they've already matched the same amount of wins they got last season in their inaugural season. So what have you seen from the team so far that has made such a great growth from last season? I think the biggest part of Youngstown State's growth this year compared to last year is their depth. This Penguins team last year is their first season in program history with the sport of women's lacrosse. I think that last year there was a team full of freshmen. They only had one senior and it was goalkeeper Alicia Wells. We had a good recruiting class this season, brought in a lot of key assets as well as some graduate students. I think that the more depth that we continue to grow throughout these next few years of Teresa Walton's tenure at Youngstown State, you'll see us to continue to grow more as a team and I think we'll continue to get better. So with it such, being such a young new sport on campus, for you as an announcer, I imagine you know, it's been a process learning the different terminology, the rules of the game. What has that process been like for you? It's actually been very tough. I, I come from Northeast Ohio where Lacrosse isn't that popular of a sport. I come right just out of Hubbard, which is right by Youngstown. I didn't play lacrosse growing up. I was a fan of the sport as a younger kid, but I think it's been pretty tough. Last year was really tough starting off because I didn't know too much about the game. As the game flow goes on, though, you start to learn more and more what the ref's calls are. And I think that as I continue to grow as an announcer myself and I continue to learn more about the game of lacrosse, it will only make me better as a person and an announcer. Well, you mentioned lacrosse not being that prominent in Northeast Ohio, and that is reflected in the team's roster, looking at it, a lot of Northeast, Mid-Atlantic players. So by having that option of lacrosse being a program here at YSU, do you think that really helps bring in an influx of diverse talent here? I think it really does. If you look at the Northeast region of the United States, that's kind of the hot spot for lacrosse. A lot of kids play that sport growing up along with sports like hockey, which is another sport that isn't too popular here in Northeast Ohio per se. But I think a big example of our talent coming from the Northeast would be Natalie Kalanja Ryan. I think that she's a stud that Coach Walton really got to come here to Youngstown. She's flown with, with flying colors first on here in Youngstown. She's had a great first few games with the Penguins. And I think that more people around her hometown of Auburn, New York, if they see how good that our team is performing with Natalie, I think that that's only going to grow their interest in Youngstown State. 
So looking ahead here, tomorrow afternoon they'll be playing their first game in the Mid-American Conference against the Akron Zips. And so it's not the Horizon League, it's a whole new conference for these Penguins. So what will they have to do to succeed in this conference? I think that especially this season our team is going to continue to grow in the Mid-American Conference just with our depth. We have to continue to grow our team chemistry. Not a lot of these players have played a lot of lacrosse together. As I said, a lot of underclassmen on this team. But this is a very tough conference. This conference boasts the likes of Central Michigan, Robert Morris, and Akron, who we play this upcoming Thursday. I think that as the season goes on, if we continue to grow our chemistry, which it will be a great building point, this week against a very skilled Akron team. I think that that'll just make us better as the season goes on. Well said. Once again, Anthony, thank you for joining us here at the round table today. I've been Caleb Ellison. Now it's time to send it back to our hosts. Thank you to Anthony Romo for joining us and talking to us a little bit about his journey with lacrosse. But now we move on to some women's tennis as they travel to take on Ball State University at the Northwest YMCA in Muncie, Indiana. The Penguins unfortunately dropped a 7-0 contest on Sunday afternoon against the Cardinals. Youngstown State earned a win at number one singles, but the Cardinals were able to take the doubles point with wins at number two and number three. At number one, the senior freshman duo of Cecilia Rosas and Julia Marco were both able to earn a 7-6 win over two Cardinals players. However, in singles, BSU won all six matches in straight sets. The women's tennis team will look to get back on track as they compete tomorrow at the University of Buffalo at 2.30. It was a huge weekend for the women's bowling team at the Big Red Invitational. The team held a strike against imperfection by setting a new school record on Friday. This was the first time in program history where Youngstown State bowlers achieved a 300 in a Baker's match, a perfect game. The record setting Baker would make an appearance on Sports Center's top 10 plays that day. The momentum of earning their record brought them into Saturday, scoring high off the bat. Redshirt senior Emma Dockery saw a, a glimmer of hope in a second 300 game, this time in solo play, but came up short in the 11th, throwing a bit off the mark. This ended Dockery's run with the 289, tying assistant coach Nikki Mendez for highest individual game in school history, ending out the day all the ladies earned respectable positions, but freshman Jade Coat held YSU's highest individual finisher at 10th place, averaging 225.6 and a career-high score of 258. After three days of competition, the women's placed fourth overall in the tournament, averaging a 215.6. The team will practice for two weeks before riding out to the Columbia 300 Music City Classic in Tennessee to finish off their regular season. The men's and women's golf teams kicked off their spring season in Florida and in South Carolina. The women began their spring season in the Rivertown Invitational hosted by Charleston Southern. The team is in a large pool competing against 16 other squads in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Senior leader Pruthuda Conrudi led the squad on day one and finished tied for eighth overall, shooting four over par. Freshman Elizabeth Sauer was behind Quan Rudy, finishing round one with a 10 over par 82. Now on to the men's side, the Penguins started off play at the Orlando Invitational hosted by Oakland. After day one of the two-day outing, YSU finished top four with a team score of 12 over par 588. Pacing the way was senior Brian Corduple, who was tied for first after day one of the Invitational. Corduple had seven birdies in two rounds and finished the day three under par. Behind Corduple was fellow senior Ken Keller, who finished even after two rounds and tied for seventh place overall. Both the men and women finished their final rounds on Tuesday afternoon. To find the results for both teams, visit YSUSports.com. Also, the men will compete again this week as they travel to the Sea Palms Collegiate hosted by Western Carolina. The team tees off on Friday and finishes the event on Saturday morning. Follow YSUSports.com for live updates. And now it's time for a special segment here on the Penguin Rundown. We have our top five plays of the semester, and Kyle Wills is going to take it away. Thanks, guys. With the regular season for both the men's and the women's teams coming to a close, we decided to compile a list of our top five plays of this past basketball season. Starting off at number five, we have senior Michael Akuche and his dunk against St. Thomas.
Coming in at number four, we have Megan Callahan and her game-winning three against Robert Morris. Coming in at number three, we have Miles Hunter and his putback dunk against Robert Morris here at the Beagley Center. Miles. Coming in at number two, we have Dwayne Cohill and his layup against the UIC Flames. And topping our list at number one, we have junior Maddie Albaugh and her layup against the University of Akron. Congratulations to all five members of our top five plays of the basketball season and good luck to both teams in the Horizon League Championships. Guys, let's send it back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Well, definitely some electrifying plays this semester, John. It was a fun season and a great regular season, obviously, for the women winning the Horizon League title. And we wish both the men and the women the best of luck here in the Horizon League tournament. That's all the time we have here at the Penguin Rundown. For news, highlights, and more, visit YSUSports.com. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and at Twitter at Penguin Rundown 1. I'm Richie Giuliano. And I'm John Ostopowitz. We'll see you next time, Penguin Nation.